Hey, welcome back to our shop just outside Kennesaw here in North Georgia. Today's project and a project for the next few days is going to be to restore and refinish the top to this very large oak dining table. I know it wasn't but two weeks ago I told you all I was through doing large refinishing jobs but a very nice lady was up against it. Uh, she couldn't find anybody else to do the job and uh, I told her I would. So let me bring you in and we'll take a look at the project that's ahead of us. We'll get the shop uh, straightened up and we'll get to work. And here's our table. It has four leaves that go with it. And the main problem are all these areas of blushing. I am told they, uh, the owners bought this table maybe 30 years ago and were promised it was a lifetime finish. During a family event, I guess they served some hot food on paper plates and, and this is the result. I have tested the uh, finish with lacquer thinner. It's not lacquer, it's some type of a urethane. I was afraid it might be a polyester when they told me it was a lifetime finish. Polyester finishes just won't come off. They require special equipment and heat. Uh, it's not even worth attempting on a piece of furniture like this to, to take off a polyester finish, in my opinion. But anyways, it's not polyester. The, the stripper uh, worked on it. It's probably some type of a polyurethane or some other uh, finish that's on there. So the first thing that we're going to do is to tape and mask this off in anticipation of stripping the table and also the four full-size leaves that are about 11 inches a piece. And you can see these large areas of blushing from where the uh, hot steam got down under the finish and basically just compromised whatever it is that's, that's on me. So we've got ourselves a pretty big stripping job and a rather large refinishing job. I think this table is probably close to 10 feet long when all these leaves are put in it. So let's get to it. And the first little issue we're going to tackle before we even start to tape this up, there's a pretty good whack right here in this apron that we're going to uh, take care of. I'm just mixing up a two-part epoxy putty. It's by Mohawk. I've used this uh, a number of times on the channel. And we'll just mix it up. The color here is walnut. And we'll fill that hole. When that sets up, we will do some color work, hit it with a little lacquer, and then we'll tape this table up. And we've given that epoxy a couple of minutes to set up. I just used this coloring pen. It's actually a dye stain. It kind of looks a bit like a magic marker. Put a little bit of color on there. And it's pretty well vanished. It's actually, I don't even know where it is until I get close to it. And then just put a little bit of uh, lacquer over the top of that to protect it and that chip is taken care of. We're going to mask off this apron. There's no need to refinish it. It's in good shape and if I find any more dents or dings I'll fix them up just like so. But then we'll move on to masking the apron and uh, getting ready to work on the top. You're looking at the edge of one of the leaves and the finish is absolutely fine along the edges. And what we have here are these pins that are the alignment pins for the leaves. I guess there's five of them on each leaf. These are plastic and they are starting to wear. And I don't want to get stripper on them and have them deform and wind up with a project where we're going to have to replace 20 or 25 of these pins. So what I'm going to do is mask off the edges of the leaves that butt together. We will refinish the molded edge which will match the molded edge of the table but these inner edges will remain as they are primarily to protect 
these plastic pins from coming in contact with the stripper and deforming or melting. And you can see I've got one edge of the, uh, the leaf all taped up with blue painter's tape. So all we'll be doing when we strip is, is getting stripper on the surface and also on this molded edge exactly as we're going to on the table. But we're going to leave these inner surfaces alone. Okay, that's a couple hours well spent. We went through, we assessed the project, we identified where the damage is, where we believe that the new finish could best start and stop. We identified what we believe to be a vulnerability with the plastic uh, alignment pins. We came up with a strategy so that we're not going to adversely affect those when we strip this piece. We're ready to strip it now. She's all been masked off, she's draped, she's taped. She's ready to go. So tomorrow morning we'll get in here with some stripper. We'll start to work on this. We've got a lot of square feet. It's going to take some time, but we'll get it done. So we will see you back in the shop tomorrow morning. So far, so good. Thanks. Good morning. It's time to get this table stripped down. Listen, I'm, I'm only going to show certain parts of this only because it's really, really difficult for me once I've got all my protective gear on and my gloves and I start to get sticky to start maneuvering the camera. The thing I want you to remember is that no matter what product you use to strip, if you're doing a project like this at home, please follow the safety instructions. We're all, we all know how dangerous methylene chloride stripper can be. It's been banned by the EPA in the U.S. for uh, non-commercial use. So if you have any of that stuff left over and you choose to use it, please be careful. I'm not familiar at all with the modern strippers. I know they're getting uh, very expensive and I'm told that they don't work very well, but that's the reality of the game. So let me show you real quickly how I do this and I'm going to switch the camera off and get to work. I personally find liquid stripper works the best for me and I just apply it with a chip brush. and we let it work and the secret if there is a secret is just to keep it wet and yes I don't have my gloves on and no I'm not wearing a respirator I'm standing by the open garage door so I can film this once I get rocking and rolling I'll be gloved up and I'll have a respirator on but that's how I apply it let me show you how it comes off and you can see we're dealing with a really tough finish here this is about the third coat of stripper I've put on this piece and some of this finish is just not letting go. My best advice when you have something like this is to scrape off what you can and then reapply the stripper and it seems like as you get the uh, top coat, maybe the top crust say, to start to get compromised then all of a sudden the stripper will start to work a whole lot better. But this is definitely a tough finish but we'll get it off. I often get questions how I handle moldings and carved edges. This is just a brass brush and this edge has had stripper on it for quite some time. And you can see the brass brush has just taken this right up. You want to make sure you get right into the corners. And if you have a stubborn area, you can use a, uh, a razor blade like a scraper. To get it off and you know there's a myriad of different shapes of little scrapers you can buy if you so wish. But in general I find with the uh, a razor blade and that brass brush I can get off most stubborn stuff and then also you can use steel wool in the stripper or lacquer thinner or whatever thinner depends on what finish you're removing of course 
But that's pretty much it. Okay, I've got all four of the leaves stripped off. The next step is to wipe them down. Since these are were finish in a finish that was not soluble in lacquer thinner, I'm going to use mineral spirits and I'm just wiping this down, getting off any residual goo that might be on there. As soon as this portion is complete and this is flashed off, I will take a wet rag and wipe them down, dry them off. That neutralizes whatever strippers left and we'll just set them aside overnight to dry. So let me get to this. And there's no need for the tape that we put on, so take a few minutes and get that peeled off. I've said before, I, it really drives me crazy when you do a refinish or you see a refinish job and then there's drips on non-finished surfaces, particularly on the underside. I, it, it looks very amateurish to me, so what I always do, particularly with client pieces, is to tape up the underside, so should there be any stripper that gets onto it, it's going to lay on the tape until I can wipe it off. It's not going to take up the finish. Got the table all cleaned off, wiped down, and now we're just going to take a damp rag and gently go over our leaves. purpose of this, again, is to neutralize whatever's left of that stripper. And then we'll just come up right along behind it and wipe it off. No big deal. And we're moving on to the table. I just wanted to document and show you all that very often with oak tables of this age, these aren't finished in what we call piano finish, where they're grain filled and completely smooth. There's an awful lot of the grain of the oak that shows through the finish, which is absolutely fine. But uh, if we had a, I guess what we call kind of a piano finish or a smooth finish, we would have to grain fill all these grain pits and then go from there. There's grain texture everywhere. And that's the style of these tables and that's what we're going to reproduce. Okay, the table's stripped. We're going to just wipe it down with some mineral spirits, neutralize it with some water, set it aside to dry overnight. Well, there we go. I think they stripped out pretty well. I think they stripped out very well. Tomorrow we'll get, uh, get on it, we'll get the sanding taken care of, see about getting them sealed up, and then work on finishing. And a little bit of a tip when you're doing a project like this, is to keep up with yourself and by that I mean when you go from step to step to step clean up rearrange the shop don't let yourself get overwhelmed with dirty rags and stripper and alcohol or, or mineral spirits take the time to clean up as you go and it's going to go a whole lot easier than it will if you just get everything out of control well it's been a good day so far I've got some other things to do I will see you back in the shop tomorrow morning We'll get this all sanded up and perhaps even sealed. So stick with us. We're making good progress. Good morning and welcome back. I moved the table outside. It's time to sand it. I've taken a good look at it. I don't think it needs much more than 220. So that's what I'm going to start with is uh, 220 grit and see how that goes. Just so you understand some of the logistics that are going on here, 
Uh, it's been unseasonably hot in Atlanta for the last several weeks. They're actually calling it hotum. Get it? Hotum, hot autumn. Normally the temperature starts to break towards the end of August and we're cooled down. It's going to be 97 degrees today. So that kind of weather affects lacquer finishes. So what we're going to do is get this sanded off outside, get it blown off outside and brought back in. And then whether or not we shoot sealer today, it's going to depend a lot on the weather. But let me get cracking here with the sanding. I'm just using a random orbit sander, 220 grit pad, and of course my breathing mask. So let's go. And as far as color goes, it looks to me like this was probably dyed with a walnut dye stain at the factory. And we'll see how much of this color remains and how much we have to add as we move forward. But I've got about 10 feet of sanding to do, so I will bring you back. I thought I'd give you a couple of quick tips on sanding a piece like this. When you get to the edges, keep your weight back, back on the larger portion of the wood. Don't put your weight forward because what will happen is you'll rock the sander forward and you'll round off these edges. Same thing goes when you find a little bit of leftover finish, which normally you're going to find along the edge. If you do a pass with your sander nice and flat and it doesn't come off, gosh please don't do this. You'll make a mess of things. Just take your scraper, in this case it's a just a razor blade and manually take off that little bit of finish. And what that'll do is preserve these edges, prepare this very well to accept a new finish and give your customer a real like nice work product. It's simple things like this where you just think ahead a little bit that keep you out of big trouble. All right, hope that was helpful. Okay, you're looking at one of the table leaves. And the first thing that should strike you is that this is all open end grain. And we know that open end grain both sucks finish and it tends to be rough. So you're going to have to do some sanding to get this smooth. This is a piece of 120. It's a disc that I use on my random orbit sander. I like it because it's nice and stiff and it lasts a fairly long time. I've also got a piece of 150 that I got on clearance because it's a stick on back and there's not too many sanders that uh, use that stick on back anymore and I use those as well. These are fairly expensive. I think they're I think they're a dollar a sheet or 50 cents a sheet or something like that. And I got the other ones for next to nothing. But anyways, what I'm doing, first thing I'm doing is going right along the top, respecting this edge right here. You don't want to compromise that at all. And then using my thumb, I'm molding the pad of my thumb into whatever space we need to get into and sanding and you can see the last little bit of the residual finish is coming up. So as you see we're we're getting off the last of the residual finish and we're also smoothing down that grain so it's going to feel nice and soft to the homeowner. And then when I'm done with the 120 I'll switch to the 150 and again, we respect the lines and the curves of the molding, preserving as much of it as we can. And there we go. That's why it takes a long time to properly sand one of these projects. All right, I've got three more of the leaves to go, and that's probably going to be it for the day. That it's just getting too hot to uh, to spray lacquer. Okay, that's going to do it for today. We've got all the sanding done and we're ready to spray sealer. We'll do that tomorrow morning when it's a little bit cooler.
Good day. Has to be done. It's tedious. Refinishing like this is extremely tedious. The stripping is tedious. The sanding is tedious. The finish removal, all stages of it, is tedious. But once we get it down to this stage here and we start the refinishing process, that's where, at least for me, it, it gets fun. So I will see you in the morning. Hopefully it won't be quite so hot. Thanks. Good morning. It's October 3rd, 2019, hot autumn, as we talked about yesterday, hot autumn here in Atlanta continues. It's going to be 97 degrees today, so it's a little before 8, we're going to get started spraying sealer on, these, on the, uh, the project here before the temperature gets too high. First step is to wipe it down with some Napa, and then we will shoot it. I bought a brand new gallon of sealer and a brand new gallon of 40 Sheen lacquer. So I'll make sure we don't have any problems at all by using uh, older stuff that's been sitting on the shelf for a while. So let me get the uh, tables wiped, or the table and leaves wiped off with some Napa, and then we will get cranking on spraying the first coat of sealer. So here we go. Okay, we're all wiped down. I use naphtha, which is like mineral spirits, but it flashes off a lot quicker. It's a, I guess, a higher distillate or whatever. Here's what I'm going to use to seal the project with. This is Mohawk's Easy Vinyl Sealer. Mohawk is not a sponsor. I use it because it's good stuff, and I can get it locally. Uh, this is the point where if you're doing this project at home without spray equipment, you could just use a, uh, a regular uh, preconditioning sealer. You can buy that at one of the big box stores. Uh, you can use a spit coat of shellac if you want, which is one part shellac, five parts denatured alcohol. You're basically just working to seal the wood so that the finish that you put on it has something to adhere to and you can start to build it above the layer of the wood. Uh, this stuff dries really quickly. It's, it powders up really nicely when you sand it. I usually do two, sometimes three coats of this as a base coat before I start to build color or whatever. I'll spray it on with uh, my DeVilbis gun. It's the DeVilbis finish line. I've got a, I believe, a 2-2 nozzle in that. I just keep the 2-2 in there. I'm just kind of used to it. Uh, and then I power my air. It comes from my uh, Quincy compressor, which is in the back of the, of the shop. Like I say, you don't have to put the, you don't have to use air equipment if you don't have it. You could just pre-stain seal it and apply uh, polyurethane or if you had to put color on first you could put a stain on. I don't generally use penetrating stains on refinishing projects where I have to match color because you put it on and you're stuck with whatever you get. So in this case we're going to seal it and we'll, we'll lay color on into the finish rather than run the risk of trying to stain that a, a, a golden oak or a dark golden oak or a walnut and have it blotch or have it look terrible. If that was the case everything's got to come back off again. All that being said, <laughs> let's get to work. And correction, I think my nozzle is a 1.8. Okay, here we go. We've given the first coat of sealer about an hour to dry. This is some 320 on a block. And I just go over this lightly. Work this down to a nice smooth finish and we'll lay another coat on. And after hitting these with 320, I'm just going over them with a piece of 4 aught steel wool just to get them nice and smooth in anticipation of that second coat. Get them all sealed up with a great layer for us to start to build our finish on. And I did the exact same thing 
exact same thing over on the table. And there's the table. Okay, I'm going to get everything blown off and then we're going to put another coat on. Hopefully you can see as these are drying just how beautifully smooth they're coming out. And we're only two seal coats into this job, so I'm real happy with what I'm seeing so far. Okay, we've got two coats of seal around it. Both coats have been sanded with 320 and rubbed down with uh, steel wool, 4 aught steel wool. And then the whole table's been wiped down with Napa. So the next step what I do here is I'm going to take a light and I'm going to go through very carefully and try to identify any flaws in the finish like a nick that um, made it through the sanding etc. I found two so far one of the benefits of doing this sanding by hand is you become for lack of a better word somewhat more intimate with the piece you're working on and you tend to catch those little flaws. So I take a nice bright light looking for scratches or dents, dings, chips. I tell you, other than the finish destruction on this piece, uh, these folks took incredibly good care of this table. This thing is in wonderful, wonderful condition. Okay, when I find one, I mark it with a little bit of blue tape. So the next step for me is to finish searching for them, and then let's fix them. You can see right there at the end of my finger, that's the kind of flaw that we're looking to, to fix. I cannot get you in this close to watch me fix it. You've seen me do this before. I'm just going to use these, these wax sticks, these burn-in sticks. I can't remember what Mohawk calls them. It's a little color match them to that and fill that in. You should be able to see me do it from afar, but you're not going to be able to get a glimpse this close. There's just no way I can get the camera here. So here we go. That little pen melts the substrate, melts the wax, and then this heat sink forces it down into the defect and also helps it cool. And then using this tool here, which is basically a scraper, you're able to flatten it out. Let me see if I can show you that. And there it is, filled in. Just like so. You can see my finger to give you an idea how close up we are. Okay, I've got a few more to do. I'm going to do them exactly the same way. I'll bring you back. The next shot is me spraying 40 Sheen Lacquer. It's a brand new can. Uh, I've had really, really good luck with it. And the problem with the weather has required me to bring the table just inside the shop. So I'll be shooting the lacquer here and it'll be blowing outside. I cannot have the camera anywhere near that cloud, it'll ruin it. So the, it goes on just exactly the same techniques as you saw me put the sealer on, but I've just got to do it and I've got to do it away from the camera or I will ruin it. So that's the next step. I will bring you back when this is coated with its first coat of, of lacquer and we'll see what the weather holds in store for us thereafter. Hi and welcome back. It's time to earn our pay. We've got to get this, uh, the color issues in this table taken care of. We have light spots from where it was uh, stripped and sanded. That happens all the time. So the idea now is to try to bring those light spots up into the same field of color as we have with the rest of the table. Now this is obviously a very large table made of oak. 
which is an open grain, multi-variable grain wood. There's a thousand colors and a thousand shades on this table. Naturally, we just need to get the light spots up so they look like they belong. I don't have a hard and fast rule for you. Use your artist's eye. Start carefully. Work your way up. Try to sneak up on your color. To do that, I've mixed up a toner. What a toner is, is a dye stain. In this case, I'm using a golden oak dye stain. This is an acetone based stain. I mix it with some lacquer thinner and a little bit of lacquer so it, it bites and stays on. And then I spray it on uh, with my spray equipment. You can buy toners in aerosol cans and, and do the same thing. I tend to stay away from the aerosols for large flat areas because, excuse me, sometimes they spit and cause problems for you. So what we're going to do next is I'll suit up. I've got my uh, toner mixed up and we will start to identify the light areas in this table that need to be darkened and we'll do it by applying toner. So here we go. Okay, I hope I'm going to be able to show you in this shot how this works. But I've got the pressure turned down, I've got the, not the, uh, the application spray nozzle turned down so it shoots out in a, in a straighter spray and much less material. And let's see if we can darken this up. Okay, but I look through the camera because that's wet, that looks like it's still a little bit light, but in color, in person, the color looks great. That's all there is to it, really. It's, it's pretty much an artist's eye. So let me get uh, the rest of these areas taken care of, and then I'll bring you back and show you how it came out. Okay, we've got the uh, toner on, the color, and we've got uh, all the light spots to my eye have been pulled in into the tone field of the rest of the wood. That was the real light area right there. That looks great. We had white or light spots in the center of a number of these uh, leaves. They're gone. That's gone. So the next step is to top coat this with a coat of lacquer. I will do that next and then I'll bring you back and show you what it looks like. I came back outside after a couple hours and using the same color techniques I touched up any little spots that were still light and then shot another coat of lacquer on it. So, so far today it's got two color coats, two lacquer coats. That's on top of another lacquer coat and two sealer coats and this is where we are so far. And I am really, really happy how this table is coming out. It looks, it looks really good. Okay, we'll let this dry overnight and we'll be back at it tomorrow. Light sanding and shooting lacquer, just like we always do. Good day. See you tomorrow. And by peeling back the uh, tape on the apron, we can see just how close we're able to get that color. I'm pretty happy with that so far. Good morning. The table looks great. My OCD is kicking in a little bit and as I look at the tabletop versus the legs, the legs have kind of a, a richer look to them and, and basically they've been glazed. And I'm thinking that I want to glaze this tabletop at least a little bit to give it just a little bit more depth of color. But I have to be real careful that when I apply the glaze I don't change the color of the tabletop. So we're going to put some Van Dyke brown glaze on this table and then we're going to continue to top coat it. So that's the next step. Stick with me. And this is what I'm going to be using. This is a finisher's glaze by, again, by Mohawk. It's in Van Dyke brown. Van Dyke brown tends to be the color of walnut, has a little bit of red in it. What I do is take some of the glaze, which is kind of a heavily pigmented medium designed to go between top coats. 
put it in a little container. I use these little paper dishes and then add some naphtha and stir the pigment up in the naphtha so I get a little bit thinner mix than what comes out of the can and I'll show you how I apply it. I apply the glaze with a foam brush and we're going to keep this, this coat is going to be pretty thin. We're just looking to get a little really honestly just another layer of color to give it some depth. It, to my eye, and I, this is probably the wrong term, it, it just looks a little washed out and I, I just need to get some pigment color in there I think and, and I'll be more happy with or happier with the way it looks. So what I'll do is I'll just show you how I do this and then I'll get rocking on the rest of the table because this glaze will will dry fairly quickly now that it's been uh, diluted with a naphtha. But anyhow, after I put the glaze on, I take a dry brush and I level it out to the intensity of color that I'm looking to achieve. Always going with the grain, making sure I don't miss any spots. We want a nice even coat of this on the surface and then we let it dry and top coat over it. Okay, let me get to work. And we've got the glaze coat on. I don't know if it shows in the video, uh, but it's made a huge difference. It's given the table a richer look it's added a little bit of red to it, which it needed. I avoided using a walnut dye stain because I didn't want the table to become too red because the eye is extremely sensitive to that. But this has really richened the top up, put in just a touch of red so it looks a little bit more like the legs do. Actually, it's almost a dead nuts match to the legs now, just a shade lighter, which it's supposed to be. But more than anything else, it doesn't have a washed out look to my eye any longer. It looks very rich. Let me see if I can show you. And here's the edge of the table, which is also glazed. And then if you look down here, and again, the light is not the best, I'm sorry but you can see how that that richness is now on the top as well. I'm really happy. Uh, this, this project is coming out extremely well, but there was that one little thing that was bothering me, and I think we just solved it. Okay, I'll let this dry up, and then we'll shoot a coat of lacquer over top of it. Okay, we've got the uh, first coat of lacquer down over that really thin uh, glaze coat we put on there. And I think you can see what a difference it made. We've got a nice rich color now. It's not looking washed out any longer. We didn't alter the color. To, you know, really made it any darker. It just pulls really the, almost the style of the finish, if I could use that, into the... Uh, into the tabletop. I'm very happy with the difference that we made. And you can see here, we're very, very close on the apron. Of course, this trim piece looks a little bit lighter, but it's supposed to. But what we're aiming for is this, the color between the black lines there. I think we, I think we hit it right on the button. And I am tickled pink the way that looks. That table is beautiful. Okay, we're gonna let this lacquer coat dry. The video is running a little long in the tooth, so let me explain what's going to happen. After this lacquer coat dries, it's going to get wet sanded and shoot another coat of lacquer on it. And then I will do the final polish on it. We have now two seal coats, one, two, three, either four or five coats of lacquer and a glaze coat and the color coat on this. So we've got quite a bit of finish on this already. 
So this is just going to sit and get, uh, lacquer is going to set up all day long and tomorrow we will get back on it. We'll sand it down and shoot lacquer on it. I'm probably not going to film the last several steps unless something interesting happens because the video is getting a little long in the tooth as it is. But uh, I will definitely bring you back if anything interesting happens and certainly for the final shots. But wow, I'm really happy. Okay, stick with us. Good morning and welcome back. I've given the table four or five days, six days, I don't honestly remember, for the lacquer to set up and get, uh, get nice and hard. Uh, the next step here is just to finish this up. The finish came out wonderfully and there's really no flaws in it. There's no nits that I feel. But what I'm going to do is give it a light coat of wax with 4 aught steel wool very gently so I don't scratch the top. I'm not trying to change the sheen. I'm just going to put a light coat of wax on this. We'll take each of the leaves out and examine them, make sure there's no drips or any problems on either the front or the back side. We'll put the table back together. We'll call the folks up and let them come pick it up. So stick with us. We're just about done. And we're looking at the back side of one of the leaves. And one of the things I noticed before I started was that some of the leaves had what some kind of a accretion on them. I'm not sure what it is. Um, this isn't from what I did, but I figured that I would make some attempt to clean it off for these people. And what I'll do, what I'm doing here is just scraping it with a razor blade lightly and it's actually under the finish in this instance here and then I'll take some mineral spirits and a steel wool and try to clean it up some more and then just spray this with a light coat of lacquer to seal it back up and I grabbed naphtha rather than mineral spirits only because it was what I found I took a little bit of this off earlier in the project from one of them from one of the uh, leaves. Yeah, and it, it is definitely down in there. This is uh, this has been here a while, whatever it is. I'm getting, I've got most of it here. Some of this is is really down in the wood. All right, that looks better. And this is what I'm going to do to apply the wax and smooth out whatever might need to be smoothed out with the finish. I've I've got a nice piece of uh, high quality four aught steel wool. I use Howard's feed and wax. And then I'm basically just with the weight of my hand and going with the grain, I'm going to run the steel wool over the finish. The grain of the steel wool is going this way so it'll cut instead of groove. Obviously I'll do the edges and I'm really just using the weight of my hand here to apply this wax. I'm not feeling any of the little ticks that you normally feel when you've got uh, nits in your finish and you're shearing it off. And this will help make this finish nice and baby smooth, just like so. I'll let the uh, wax sit for about 10 or 15 minutes and then wipe it off with a uh, microfiber towel and that will be it. So let me get to it and we'll move on to the table and we'll finish this up. Well, that's it. That's how I went about refinishing this table. I hope uh, you found the video to be helpful. Uh, a couple of tips, probably the biggest takeaways of this whole thing if you have a project like this, 
First off and most importantly, don't create any divots. It will show like, I can't even tell you how quickly it'll show up on a long shiny table. And uh, the second hint that I have is when you put color on or you're putting finish on, do everything together. Do the tables, do the leaves, do everything together if you can to try to minimize any difference in color. Uh, in this case, we were able to stretch this table out to almost 10 feet and uh, we were able to take care of it that way. So here it is. I'll bring you in close for some beauty shots, but uh, let me say goodbye now. From our shop just outside Kennesaw here in North Georgia. Best regards, thanks for watching, take good care, and remember, it's just wood color and some shiny stuff, and in the case of a 10-foot table topper finish, a bit of work. We'll see you next video. Bye.